Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Polaris, think outside. Can-Am, time for some off-road living. And by Yamaha, revs your heart. Here at Dirt Tracks, we get a lot of comments and suggestions from you, our viewers, and we love the feedback. One of the most common though, is that we should test more base model units. And I get it. Most of the time, the vehicles we test are special editions or top of the line models with all the bells and whistles, but there's actually a perfectly good explanation for this. Back in the old days, we would put in requests to the manufacturers for the vehicles that we wanted to test. And 99% of the time, we got what we wanted. Recently though, manufacturers have simply been sending us whatever units they want us to test, or in some cases, whatever they have in stock. And unsurprisingly, those are usually the flashiest and most expensive ones. And I'm not complaining, I have the best job in the world. But when you ask us to test more realistically priced vehicles, ones that more people can afford, I hear you loud and clear. Today, I'm testing a brand new Can-Am Commander Max. Now I've tested other Commander units over the past couple seasons. Those were all high-end units, and I've always come away very impressed. Today though, I'm bringing you what you asked for, because today I'm testing Can-Am's 2022 Commander Max DPS. This is a base model Commander. The only bell or whistle it really has is power steering, and I think power steering should be standard on all side-by-sides. I guess I can't really claim that we picked this vehicle just for you guys and girls though. We did have ulterior motives. Shortly following this test ride, AJ is gonna be doing a full build on this thing. It's gonna be designed to haul mountain bikes and camping gear into remote areas for real backcountry biking adventures. We picked the DPS model because we're gonna be adding all kinds of cool parts to this thing anyway. And I really don't see any point in taking off expensive parts just to replace them with expensiver ones. So now you know the what's and why's, let's get onto the testing and find out whether or not a base model commander can still provide the same level of utility and recreation as the higher end versions. The question we simply need to answer is this, do you really need all the fancy bling to have a great time off road? To get started, let's take a look at what a commander max actually is. Now the max designation indicates that it's a four seater and it is a four seater. But the actual classification of this unit would be a sport utility four-seater. It's designed to both work and play and be great at both. And as the only other four-seat sport unit to have a dumping cargo box, its main competition would be the General XP4. Both of these units have 1,000 cc engines making approximately 100 horsepower. They both offer on-demand two and four-wheel drive with turf mode, and they both have a sizable and well-functioning dumping cargo bed. Some will say that the General was the first true sport utility side by side. And you can look at this two ways. The truth is the original commander with all of its flaws was designed to both work and play, which is the literal definition of the classification. But unlike the general, it was not based on a sport side by side platform. The general on the other hand was and still is based on a razor platform, which is why it rides and handles so good at higher speeds. So you decide what matters more, the intention of the vehicle or the actual execution of it. None of us here at Dirt Tracks have much good to say about the original Commander, but this new version is very impressive. And it is based on a sport side-by-side -side platform, the Maverick Sport to be specific. Which means when speeds get higher, it rides and handles much like a Maverick Sport and nothing like the original Commander. In terms of creature comforts, the DPS model doesn't include any extras, yet it's still nicely appointed and very comfortable. The back seat is big enough to accommodate full-size adults without even the tallest ones having to cram their legs into the footwells. I'm not gonna say it's spacious, but it does work. I would estimate that at least 80% of people who buy a four seat sport utility side-by-side -side are buying for their family, which would consist of mom and dad and the kids. So with that reality understood, the question I have is simply this, just how important is it to have a back seat with all kinds of extra leg room for a guy my size? In my opinion, it's not that important. What would be more important, again, in my opinion, would be whether or not smaller passengers can see their surroundings and get to take in the whole riding experience. I'm glad to say that all of my smaller test passengers reported that they had great sight lines from the back seat of this vehicle, which is a huge plus if you're buying a Max for your family. All four seats feature standard three-point seat belts. The rear grab handle is well positioned, but it's just bare metal, which means it would be cold to hold on to in cold weather. And if anything ever did happen, it would be a hard service to bang your melon off of. Wrapping it in foam would make a lot of sense. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by MBRP Performance Exhaust, built for the victory lap. One of the best standard features found on all Commander units is their doors. Now these are listed as being half doors, but when I look at them, I seem to think of them more as three quarter doors. 
They have rubber gaskets that do a decent job of keeping out mud and water. They open easily and close tight with very little rattling. They're finished on the inside and they look great. I can't say that these doors set the Commander above its competition because the General also has excellent doors. What I can say is that these are really nice doors that will keep you clean, dry, and safe. Under the hood of this particular Commander Max lies Can-Am's 976cc 90 degree liquid cooled V-twin that produces approximately 100 horsepower. Now even this base model includes multiple drive modes which are Sport and Eco. The motor is the same as what's found in pretty much all Maverick, Trail and Sport 1000 models. It's bulletproof, creates fantastic bottom end grunt and in most cases pulls really hard when the clutches shift out fully. However, I said this in my last Commander test ride and I'll say it again here. In the Commander, this motor feels a little soft. I think it's very likely that Can-Am has tuned the throttle curve to be way more mellow than the Maverick models to better suit the split personality of the Commander. But it just doesn't give you the same sporty feeling when you want it. And since this is a sport utility side-by-side, -side, it really should feel more sporty in my opinion. The Commander is offered with either the 1000 or Can-Am's new 700 class engine mated with P-Drive. I haven't personally tested the 700 yet, so I can't comment on how it works but it's gonna be a slightly more affordable yet more than powerful enough option for a large portion of Commander buyers. In terms of driveline, the Commander mirrors the Maverick Sport. It features a high-low neutral reverse gearbox with park setting, mated to Can-Am's excellent quick response system CVT with electronic belt protection. From the gearbox, power is transferred to the wheels through a shiftable 4x4 system that includes turf mode out back and Can-Am's ViscoLock QE or quick engagement front differential. It does not have an additional front diff lock setting. In the suspension department, the Commander Max DPS has the very same front and rear double A-arm setups as the higher end models. They produce 12.5 inches of travel up front, 13 inches out back, and yield a total of 12.5 inches of ground clearance. The shocks are basic preload adjustable twin tube gas units, yet they are the same as what's found on the XT model and do a decent job of resisting bottoming on big bumps while still maintaining a plush ride. I've saved talking about storage and cargo capacities till almost the end of this test ride because I think the numbers are really impressive. The cargo bed, which is obviously one of the main selling features of this vehicle, is really nice. It's the largest cargo bed in its class, offering eight cubic feet of capacity, and it can haul up to 600 pounds. A two inch hitch receiver will allow you to tow an astounding 2,000 pounds, which is also best in class, and 500 pounds greater than the general. Rounding out its impressive cargo capabilities is its excellent glove box storage bin in the front of the passenger and super useful storage bin in front of the driver. There are also two incredibly unique storage containers on either side of the bed if you remove the outer plastic. As I stated in the beginning of this test ride, we chose the DPS version of this Commander Max because we have plans to upgrade it big time, and I think this is a completely valid reason to buy a base model. It doesn't come with fancy aluminum wheels, and while its 27-inch XPS Trail Force tires are good and get the job done, our intentions are to outfit the Commander with a new set of tires and wheels specific for our purposes. So why pay for the fancy factory wheels that will just sit in our garage? Similarly, it doesn't come with a roof, but we have one coming for it. So why pay for a stock roof when we're just gonna replace it with a better one? The only feature this DPS model doesn't have that can't really be upgraded is its digital gauge. The base model Commander has the small 4.5 inch gauge instead of the bigger 7.6 inch display. Does this really matter though? To me, not really. This little gauge has all the information that you could ever possibly need, and while it is a little bit harder to read than the bigger gauge, it's not terrible at all. So what are my overall thoughts on the 2022 Can-Am Commander Max DPS? Is the overall riding experience as good as the higher end models, or should you spend the extra money for an XT? The answer, of course, is that it all depends on what you plan to do with it, or more accurately, what you plan to do to it. But if you're the type of rider who will buy wheels and tires no matter what, and who's likely going to upgrade other things also, the DPS model makes more sense as far as I'm concerned. It does all the same things as the XT. All the base specs, including the shocks, are exactly the same. Buy the DPS and customize it to be exactly what you want it to be. That's what we're going to do, and that's exactly why I picked the DPS as a starting point for our build. Trail Tech is sponsored by Princess Auto. Make it work. There's very few times where I'm left with a question that I'm struggling to find the answer to, but when asked how to upgrade the brand new 2022 Polaris Pro R and make it better, I, I kind of was left scratching my head. The Pro R 2 liter is a beast of a side-by-side, -side, coming from the factory with a literal inline four-cylinder car engine, pumping out 225 horsepower and built like it's ready for war. This is one serious, well, scratch that, reverse 
This is the most serious side-by-side -side ever produced and sold by a manufacturer, and not just by a little bit. This side-by-side -side right here rewrites the rules we all thought were being played by and sets a whole new standard for the future of manufacturer-built off-road vehicles. So back to my original question, how do you make what is undeniably the best side-by-side -side ever produced even better? Well, the first thing that you do is go direct to the source and find out what Polaris has already built for it. And let me tell you, Polaris has a ton of stuff already designed and built for the Pro-R. I mean, this right here is just a small sample of all the products they offer that I believe is gonna take us to the next level and just sort of set our Pro-R apart from a stalker. Now, because it's so much fun watching me step-by-step -step install every single accessory, I'm just gonna skip most of the nuts and bolts type shots. I'm gonna get this beast out on the trail and talk you through how all the accessories actually function in the real world as I'm actually driving the Pro-R. Sound like a plan? Well, good, let's get to it. So on every other Polaris vehicle that we put winches on, typically with the Razor, you gotta take the front hood off, get underneath, that's where all the wiring goes on and you feed stuff through the firewall. Pro-R, you don't have to do that. So just remember, if you're putting a winch on your Pro-R, you can route everything externally. You go through the firewall, through the little rubber biscuit, you plug everything into the bus bar, which is underneath the center storage console. So keep that in mind. So I'm just installing the light bar and I'm routing the wires through the roll cage of the Razor. And one of the things that I find really handy, Polaris does a great job of the internal routing lines and even where it comes out is nice and tapered and, and it's usually pretty easy. You're gonna find every once in a while that certain wires just don't wanna go through. Take a zip tie, electrical tape it to the end of the wires, make sure that you make it nice and tight and there's nothing sticking up. And I find that the zip tie comes through the bottom hole way easier. You can reach that, you can grab it with uh, needle nose pliers or whatever. It just seems to be something that really works well for me. So hopefully it helps you out too. So I just finished installing the Polaris over fenders and I just wanted to let you know because as I go along, it's interesting to see the different level of uh, expertise you need to put some of these parts on. The over fenders are super easy to put on. They go on really smooth and Polaris engineers have done a great job at integrating these. It's like maybe a half hour job, worst case scenario if you're unskilled. You're gonna do it in 15 minutes if you know what you're doing. These things are really nice. So I know in the test ride, both for the Turbo and for the Pro-R, Luke and I have both talked about how beefy and big the hub assembly and the brakes and all of the front end equipment on this vehicle is. But man, when you get the wheels and tires off and you see just how thick this disc brake rotor is and how big these brakes are and the size of this like just solid beefy hub assembly, it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, a unitized hub is very cool as well because when you wanna change that sucker out, it's just like a pickup truck. You put on a new hub assembly. It's, uh, this, is, this is next level in strength that Polaris is going to. Dirt Tracks has been sponsored by Hercules Tire, Ride in Our Strength, Tire Jet, Full Tire Protection and Permanent Seal, and by Mad Ramps, Leave the Trailer and Go. So obviously right away I notice a couple of things. Number one being the glass windshield. It's really nice. I mean, this is automotive style. Probably the nicest windshield I've ever seen on a side-by-side. It's really tidy. Uh, it's got a little vent down on the bottom and it's solid glass too, so I know it's not gonna scratch like a typical poly shield.
Now, the side close-off panels inside here are really nice too on the doors. Gives me an awesome spot for my elbow. My elbow fits down here just perfectly. Um, it's cleaned up and the coolest part about it is when I blast through the water, all the water doesn't come pouring in like it did before. Then obviously we got the back uh, kind of close-off panel back here. Um, it's made out of like a Lexan. Actually looks a lot like a snowmobile windshield, the material. But the inside of the cab now, there's no dust swirling around and coming in. It's very tidy. So when you buy a Pro R, obviously, you know, if you've got the navigation screen, you got the ride command, you get backup cameras. This one's got the forwards and the rear facing camera. That's pretty awesome. The reality is having a rear view mirror and side view mirrors is really, really nice. I mean, it just gives you visuals of all those things that you might not otherwise see. And the cameras, while good, don't give you adjustable uh, range of view. The nice thing is that this field of view, I can alter and change, I can shift it, I can move it around. It works really good. Functionally out on the trail, we got the Pro Armor Crawler XG33s on this thing. I am blown away. I mean, I can't even, I can't even understand how we have 33 inch tires on a side-by-side -side now. Like, where are we? Most pickup trucks don't even come with 33s on them. That's insane, but these Crawler XGs are a great tire. Everything's riding really smooth. You're in the best side-by-side -side built. <laughs> You're not feeling anything anyways, but the grip that these provide is really, really good. It feels great. So obviously one of the biggest things that I always love to do is put a winch on a side-by-side -side or an ATV. You're gonna use it all the time. There's never a shortage of times when you're gonna use it or when somebody else needs it. Um, and the 6,000 pound rapid recovery winch from Polaris, oh my goodness, let me tell you, this thing has power for days. Strongest winch I've ever put on a side-by-side, -side, but that 6,000 pounds of tow capacity or pull capacity is, well, it's pure insanity. I mean, you can pull anything. I ripped a tree in half. This thing works really good. It's got rapid recovery, so the speed coming back into the winch when you put it in high gear is two times faster. The bumper that it's mounted to, the high clearance bumper, really nice. Uh, installing it wasn't a hassle at all. It worked really well, went on easy, um, and it fits up really nice. It looks good, but it's still not too big. You know, It doesn't have huge wings off the side, which I'm not a massive fan of. It's just the right size. Out back, the high clearance bumper there is great too just in case when you're backing up, you get a little too close to something and it makes the style of this thing just up the next level. Now, along with coverage, um, we've got the, the big fender flares on this thing. The front ones, when you put them on, you're like, whoa, these are huge. And then you stand back after you put the front and rears on and you go, oh, they still don't entirely cover. They're nice looking, they're big. They're kind of like bushwhackers on a Jeep. The uh, coverage, I mean, when I'm going through the water, you'll see me blasting through. It's just exploding everywhere. And I mean, my arms, I'm not wet. I'm not soaked. I'm not muddy. They work really good. I think they're a nice feature. I'd buy them. Obviously, when you go for a ride, you want to have some storage. So I, I got the 10 quart storage bag here in between me and the passenger, which is really nice. You can put bottles of water, snacks, the stuff that you want to get to really easy, your cell phone if you want. It's nice, goes on really simple. Then in the back, I got the 60 quart uh, big cargo box. It's lock and ride, so it's four four lock and ride plungers and you're in. Works great. You can put stuff in it, or if you're going overnight, there's more than enough space back there to throw stuff in and be able to do an overnight trip or just have all that gear that you might need. Safety kits and tire repair stuff and whatever you might need. There's lots of room back there, so having that storage is always really handy. So a couple of the electronics that I really appreciate inside of here is the Rockford Fosgate Stage 3 audio upgrade is a 12-inch subwoofer with a built-in amplifier. It is serious, serious sub. That thing is so much bass. It's really, really loud. Has its own amplifier. Hooks into the uh, the power of the of the side by side. So you got you know a really serious stereo add on there. So that's a that's a really nice feature. It goes in pretty easy. Takes a little bit of time, but it's not too bad. So. Then the other uh, electronic accessory that we put on was the dual row LED light bar from Pro Armor. And that came with the uh, pulse bar adapter harness and then also the uh, illuminated switch inside the cab here that looks just like the other uh, switch inside the cab here for changing your drive modes. You hook it right into the pulse bar and pulse bar has power and ground. So super, super simple, really easy. I mean, Polaris is doing that with just about everything now. And it's really smart because it makes accessorizing your vehicle 
something you can do at home if you're not comfortable with electronics. Um, the LED light bar, it's 30 inch, it's dual row, and it throws a ton of light. Now, I haven't used it at night yet, but I'm planning to get out for a night ride and have some fun. And you can never have too much light. And it does really give the front of this buggy just kind of that little bit more aggressive look. I really like it. I can turn it on in the middle of a sunny day and I can see it illuminating stuff in front of me. This thing's super bright. Overall, I'm super impressed with all the parts and pieces we put on our Pro-R. And I think that you're gonna be really impressed with any of these that you purchase for yours.